Hi everyone, so today I have a set to share with you is the die and press uh, stamp and die kit called Halloween Pets. It is an auto ship program you guys and I told you that the very first video I did for this new set of items that die and press has brought to HSN for all the August 13th craft day. Just so that you wouldn't pick it up and then be bummed out that you missed on the auto ship or something like that. So hopefully you guys saw that. Um, there are three auto ships actually. so. This is one of them, and I'm going to splice in the little images in just a second so you guys can see them right now, and then I'll try to put them at the end of the video in case you miss this part and you see them at the end or however. Um, the Harvest Alphabet also has a uh, an auto ship. I think it has six or seven deliveries afterward, and they are all so cute. Oh my goodness, they're all different alphas with different styles, and they come with all kinds of dies to decorate them in cute ways. Um, super adorable. And then the Today Special will have an auto ship option also, which is super cool. So let me open this guy up. If you are seeing this video, you know, the auto ship should be there if for some reason it's not and I had to release the video because it's getting kind of, you know, really close to the craft day. Uh, just know there will be an auto ship option, so maybe you want to hold off on that one, okay? Um, but Diamond Press did send these items free of charge for my review, and of course, all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So thank you for using those if you would like. And with YouTube, um, possibly... For sure they'll be in the links, but they might be embedded in the video here where it says show products or see products or something like that. Um, so there's just different ways to see those and pop over to HSN. So thank you. For Excuse me. So again, thank you for using those if you would like to. Um, okay, so let's see the auto ship options right now. They are all pet related and they're all super cute. Okay, guys, I mean, how adorable, right? I mean, you have your stamps, you have your dies. They're all little pets. These guys are the Halloween pets. And then you're going to have all the different options for the different seasons and reasons and all that. <laughs> so there you go. Um, let me pop this over. With Diamond Press and their kits, they are including two sticky sheets, an applicator, and some info about that. And basically, you just put the back of your die cut facing these little gray sheets you pop it down you give it a rub 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 and those little gray dots will stick to the back of your die cut and you can use them on your projects right so it's adhesive ready to go you have those guys you have a um, cutting folder for the marquee if you do not have a marquee um, a die impress marquee cutting system these thin metal dies will go through any machine that cuts the metal dies but they always include one for you and that's really great let's look at the inspo and then um, we'll look at the dies and things themselves so they're showing here you have the little cat dressed like a skeleton or the little mummy dog there so you have the stamp you have the die cut and then down here they're showing you have um like the little pumpkin that you would put the either you know dog little like head or the cat head and then you have paws if you want to put the little paws so it looks extra cute and then again you can decorate with like the witch hat so these are all stamps with dies um little tail or longer tail so they're showing you here what that would look like. Sorry about the lighting on that. Oh my goodness. And then here we have the skull and crossbones. You have um, a bat stamp and a spider stamp and the die for it. You have Boo, that's cute, with like the little dog paws and the dog bone and then the dies for those. And then you have some words. So we have Howl, Oween, or Meow, Oween, and then Happy. So you can um, put those together. I think the Happy is a stamp, yeah. So if you want to look like that, you're going to stamp over it. You're going to apply this and then stamp over it to get that look right. Um, no bones about it. Feline, feline spooky. <laughs> just treats, no tricks. And then you have some stamps that are just stamps, right? Um, they don't have dies with them over here. And yeah. And then some inspo there for you guys. Super cute. So let's check these guys out. I'll give you a quick measure if you have a little idea about how big they are. I know that that might be hard to tell sometimes. So we have our stamps really cute uh, um, again you have dies for these two guys and these two guys are more of just something you would color in um, that one's almost three inches tall and this guy and I'm just measuring like rubber to rubber so I might be a little shy of that almost three inches also on that one and this guy also is almost three inches and this guy is almost three inches so they're about the same kind of sizing and then of course you have your pumpkin and how you would match that up or pair that up and then over here we have our dies for all those guys 
So let me grab a card base, some paper, and we'll just hop to it. I'll create my own card base here. And then I have the, I think this is the holiday paper, if I'm not mistaken. The dime press is brought to HSN. And I think I'm going to do this background here. So I'll have some fun creating a background. I was going to run through an embossing folder, but you know what? We'll do some stamping. So. I will cut this a two size paper. It's eight and a half by eleven, so we're going to cut it at five and a half inches, and then do this at four and a quarter. So yeah, they just are coming out with the cutest auto ships, and you know I love to get on an auto ship, so I will be ordering this set myself so I can get the auto ship, and um, just excited about them. So this one I'll do five and three eighths, by four and one eighth. And that's just because I like eights if you want a matte layer with something bigger, like just the whole thing, four and a quarter by five and a half, or um, four by five and a quarter because you like quarter inches, you know, however I used to always do that. And I just feel like they're so big that they see um, the side areas there, you know. So I get a little bit tighter, but if you do four by five and a quarter, you'll have a little more white area all around. I'm just going to use this guy, I think. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to grip mat here. Onto that guy. And I want some, like a dark purple ink. I'm just going to grab whatever I have in my stash here. And I'm going to stamp that little bone. So I don't want a really big stamping block. Let me see how big that bone is. Oh, it's a little bigger than I thought. Oh, you know what? We can do the bats. Oh, I don't know. I was going to do the little bones. Just because I would probably go ahead and work with the doggy today. And you know what? That fits if I put it across this way. I hope. And I'm just going to go for it. But of course, you can use a stamp position if you would like. Just make sure that it really gets inked up everywhere. And just start stamping it kind of organically everywhere. Okay, so that's going to take me a little bit. So I will come back. In just a minute, I'm just going to stamp, stamp, stamp. Good. Oh, maybe another one. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this, wash this off, and we'll continue on. My hands are wet. Hopefully I don't get water on this. I'm just going to stick that down. And, you know, I'm going to do, I think... The little pumpkin one, so you can see the different steps that that would take. Otherwise, you just stamp and then die cut, you know, color die cut the other characters. So we'll do that. And you can definitely stamp some of these things on, like, colored paper already, like the pumpkin, if you want to just stamp it on orange paper, so or it's already orange, or those kinds of things. But we're going to color ours in, so I'm just going to take the pieces I need. And... I was specifically looking for um, alcoholic marker paper. And so, for the little doggy and everything, I would need... Let me use this bigger piece. Do it that way. Oh, no, we're not going to do it that way. <laughs> I wanted to butt it up here, but there's like a mark on there already. So, I'm just going to bring that as close as I can. And tape that down. <laughs> Maybe... And let's see, so we need our doggy, his head there, and we need the jack-o'-lantern, of course, and we need the tail, you can do the witch's hat if you'd like, or don't, but I think we need that too to make it really festive, so put it there, and then the hat, and I want to say that is everything, let's see, ah, yeah, so hat, no hat, however. Oh, the paws. The paws. Let me see if they're very different. That's the same set of paws, so, you know, you just use that one. Same for either animal. And we can put that, like, right there. Okay. 
So let's get that stamped up. If you are using alcohol ink markers, you're going to want to use a water-based ink to stamp with, and then or a hybrid ink, right? Or anything that uh, works with <laughs> alcohol ink markers. But I get these questions often, and that's basically what works with alcohol ink markers, a water-based dye ink or a hybrid ink. If you're using a hybrid ink, you have to really let it dry before you start going in with your markers or it'll smear anyway, okay? So you got to make sure they're dry. There are some areas here that are just dark, dark, dark. So interestingly enough, I did use charcoal, which is more of a gray black than just black black. It's a dye and press ink, so it is going to have a different look to it anyway. Uh, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll do the hat and this guy one more time. Actually, we can just do the whole thing if we're going to do the whole thing. If we're already here, might as well. And these are acrylic stamps, so just some firm, even pressure. There you go. And I'm just going to clean these off and put them back on their carrier and grab some alcohol ink markers, and I will be right back. Oh my goodness, you guys, I did what essentially was the cattail. I just noticed, I was like, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> so let me stamp this one. I'm just going to stamp it here, and obviously I'll use that. Um, but yeah, I'll be right back. Hey, guys, so that's pretty funny. I, was say, I think some dogs do have longer tails. Just, you know, for this one, I feel like it needs to be the little guy, especially if you're looking at the dog. Um, it looks like it has that other tail. Anyway, um, as you're putting this little guy together, you can see a little bit of the inside of the pumpkin, so don't forget to color that in. I'm just going to color everything orange on the pumpkin. So um, I'm using a color called Marmalade. And just get some of that dark color, like in here. And these little areas. Again, I do things really playful. I'm not super concerned that's neutral. No, I don't want that one. Uh, medium, marmalade medium. Let me get a little more of that going. And I'm just pretty much coloring the whole thing. I will go around the eyes even though they're just black, but, and then this is the light one. There we go. Only because it does look a little bit messy if you really color into the dark area. And you can always touch that up with a black marker too, if you would like. You see I'm still going around those areas. Try not to color it too much. Trying to keep that nice. And essentially there is our pumpkin. Okay. So again, just fun. I grabbed some purple for the hat. I wasn't going to use all three shades, but I have them here, so might as well. So I'm using a color called Eggplant, just maybe like there, just around in here, just a little bit. Eggplant Medium. Kind of bring that out a little bit. And Eggplant Light. Now if you want to make it look really round, do what you can do is bring a little bit of the color in here. A little bit in there, a bit through here, and a little bit more over here, and then blend it all through so that there's an area in the center that didn't have any color to begin with, so it looks a little bit lighter there, and it just makes it look more rounded. Um, something like that. And our doggy and our paws. So I did get some brown color and then I have like an accent of like a lighter neutral color. Let's put these to the side. So his little tail is going to stick up kind of like this. So I want it to be a little bit darker on the top. And I'm just using dark and medium for this. I'm using the very tip of that to get in there. And then our little paws, same thing. Just a little dark up here. And then blend that down in with the medium. But again, I'm not using light, but if you want to use light, then you would do a little bit of medium and then blend it all through with the light. Just something quick like that. And honestly, I haven't looked at a doggy like this in a long time, so I'm going to go in with 
this dark color in here all in here and maybe a little bit of contouring in there I'm gonna blend that through all in here and you can go over those areas if you want like the black there I'm not gonna go over his eyes too much I'm gonna get really close and then I think I need to switch out to the bullet tip to keep this nice and neat okay if you do go over his eyes you can always take a gel pen and then just make that darker again the white pot part just a little white dot little white dot and I brought out some neutral color I don't remember exactly how this looks it's the light and this is the dark um, okay I'll put a little bit of dark neutral in here just move into these little areas and then I'll bring in the light one and just blend it through the whole muzzle and I think that looks pretty good okay guys so we're just gonna cut these guys out you actually have a, a die for the bone which I did as a background but you do have that if you want to use that now this guy I feel like I can see pretty well like if it's right on the line or not left and right that looks pretty good to me right there but if you feel like you need to make an aperture or a little window for yourself do that nope oh, that was a small little piece <laughs> Anyway, I'll grab all the pieces that I have here. Now for this one, actually, uh, I'll, I'll just right take this ash color and just go around the edges of everything. So it's just something to do. Otherwise, you know, you have a white line, which is fine. But for this one, a little Halloween card, I kind of want it to be a little more spooky and things. So I'm just going to take this gray. I usually use the very light color, but this one, I feel like worked really well. So I'm going to go around each design with a gray pen. Okay, just like that. So when you cut it, the edge is going to have like a gray look to it. And I'll be right back. Before I run these through, I do want to show you in case you're new here or to paper crafting. What I'm going to do is just take a scrap of paper and I'm going to use the die that I need for my little tail. And since I can't really see through it too well, especially the paws, the paws are like a solid piece. So I do will. I do will. <laughs> I will do the same thing with that one. Um... I'm just going to run it through, and I have a folder here that I already cut into, so I'm just going to use that. And again, you can cut on all sides of your folder, so just on every surface of that. So we'll run that through. And you can keep using this for as many cards as you make. You know, you want to keep cutting out tails, you have that there. Um, just open it up like this. Do not remove it. Don't, like, completely take it off, but just open it up a little bit, and then you can see exactly where you're cutting. You're using it as a little window to help you see that and then I'd like to tape it down I like to give it a little extra tape to tape it to your actual project so it doesn't move too much and then I'll run these through now I eyeballed the other ones so we'll see <laughs> yep not too bad so again I eyeballed that one and that's like right on and then our little tail here that was cut really well same thing with these little paws I'll make myself a little aperture to see through and I will use that to help me cut out my paws so I will be right back actually a lot of times I'll reuse even the tape that I used so like if I can get this off of here carefully I'll still use this one to help me with the next one Okay, I'll be back. So there's our last bit with again using the little aperture. And we have perfect little paws. <laughs> Super cute. Okay, let's bring this back. You know, I wasn't really planning on if I was going to do it this way or this way. I was thinking more of this direction. Oh my gosh, how cute are those? Okay, so um let's see how high up this goes oh his little hat can be a little bit sideways right we love that maybe this way because I have a bone there but I don't have one here so that'd be better going that way 
And there's a little tail. Okay. So I'm just pin that guy there. Let's bring his tail in. Actually, you know what? Let's give his tail a little more dimension. Just a little bit. I'm just going to put some low profile dimensionals behind the very top part. And I did put glue, so it's going to be a little slimy. <laughs> i really try to hold that down. There we go. Cute. I like that. Okay, I'm going to hold that for just a little bit. Actually, I know I'm going to put his little paws like in here, so let's just go for those two. And you have your out and turn it over yeah so you have your image there I think I'm gonna put his little paws like here and here and then pop up his little head and hat so I'm gonna hold that for a second <laughs> so cute and so let's put some dimensionals where did I put them all right Behind here. I'm going to take the carriers off. I know that part's kind of boring, so I'll be right back. A little glue. It looks like the, <laughs> this guy has like eyebrows, little groucho marks going. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that there. Cute. I'm going to stick that down, but then this guy's popped up here. And then same thing with this guy. I'll put some glue here to hold onto there, but then I'll put dimensionals back here. So I'm going to take a moment to get some of the same dimensionals back in this area. And I'll take the carriers off and all that. Okay. And just a little bit of glue in that middle area because this also is going to be kind of up. Pulling away. So we have that little guy. <laughs> Super cute. Okay, I'm just going to hold it all together and I'll be right back. We have our cute little card there. And so I'm going to put this to the side for a moment. And I think I'm just going to stamp a couple of things. So we have some sentiments, we also have our dies, of course, but I'm going to stamp, I think, we have no bones about it, very cute, no tricks, just treats, I think. So, I just have this white piece of paper here, and I'm just going to stick that down, and I'm going to stamp these in a way that it's just like, I'm going to trim that one down, trim that one down. a little bit crooked okay and I'm gonna stamp that in purple bring some of that purple back lots of purple today in this one I stamped that a couple times because I can see that the ink pads a little bit dry oh actually that came out really nicely um yeah I guess we're good it looked like it wasn't quite on there Okay, um, I'm just going to take this to my um, paper trimmer and just trim those down. And then I'm going to make some darker purple like matte layers for them. But I'll be, I don't know if this needs to be tutorialized. But I just bring this here and I try to cut it about the same spacing as I have here. And that's why I always start like right in the corner. That looks good already. And then down here, I try to trim off about the same amount. Eh, something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Not too bad. I do want a little bit less on the top. I should have cut that off first. So it's better to work with a bigger piece of paper than a smaller piece of paper. So if you think you want to trim up a little off the top or wherever, do that first. And then I usually just kind of eyeball with another matte layer piece like that. And I cut that down, or you can just actually measure it and get yourself a matte layer cut that f fits that measurement. Whatever it is that's easiest for you. So I'll do that for both of them, and I'll be right back. So that was really fun. They're both they were both um, needing about a seven eighth inch matte layer, but one was just a little bit longer than the other. That just treats. Um, this one was like one and five eighths, and this one had to be one and three quarters inches wide. So that's really fun. 
that worked out. Okay, so I was thinking about popping these guys in like something like that. And they can be popped up or they can just be flat, you know, whatever it is you want. So let's do no tricks. And then just treats. And again, that could be popped up a little bit. I usually do that with the one that's kind of more forward, but that's alright. Um, and that is my card, guys. Super sweet with our little uh, pets. Again, with the auto ship option. Adorable for all the different seasons. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much, Diane Preston, these items for review. I'll have images coming up. I'll have the links in the description box again, possibly right in here. And I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now.